This morning, I'd like to share on the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal. Taken from Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. Now, the World Cup fever is on us. The World Cup is on us. And I'm sure that uh, many, many people are really caught up in these uh, uh, sports. And, uh, of course, for this year, 2018, the World Cup is held in Russia. And I did a little bit of search on Russia, you know, and uh, to my amazement, Christianity makes up the major part of religion in Russia. Now, all of us think that it is a communist country, atheists and all that, but now uh, statistics, all right, uh, vary, of course, but Christianity makes up a major portion of uh, religion in Russia. It varies from 45% to 75% or 76%. You know, that's how high it is. And uh, I was surprised. Now, of course, those practicing Christians, they say maybe just about uh, uh, 6 to 8 percent. You know, but those who profess that they are Christians, you know, can be as high as 76 percent. Can you just imagine? And of course, the strongest church there is the Russian Orthodox Church that has been around for a long time. And even uh, as when we had any sports uh, games here, the Christian church always try to use that opportunity to present Jesus Christ and Christianity even as the world converges upon the venue of the sports event. And that's what they are doing also. The Russian Orthodox Church and other churches, they are trying to use even this uh, World Cup event you know, to testify about the Lord Jesus Christ and His goodness. And now, for, the, for, for many of us that are glued to the TV, even though the time difference, all right, is great, but not so great this time because that you still got the 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock slot, but some of you are willing to sacrifice your sleep to wake up at 2 o'clock. How many of you did that this morning? Don't raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know it was a, it was a very, very uh, interesting uh, game, powerful teams uh, that competed la uh, last night and uh, this morning. But you find that uh, you know, there's something about football, you know, that captures the imagination and the enthusiasm of almost uh, a, 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 a large population of the world. Now, football is unlike other games, you know, other professional games. You know, and other games, you need a, an equipment, all right? Whether it's tennis, badminton, golf, you know, and other things, you need special equipment. But for football, you don't need any equipment except just a ball, all right? Uh, 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 a ladder uh, uh, filled with air, and the main thing is, of course, the legs, all right? The legs and uh, the, the skill. There's a, there's a special chemistry between the football and the legs of the professional players. Somehow, they are able to control it in such a wonderful way. I tried before, it never worked. So I love football, but I just, uh, I, I only, the, uh, the, the most that I participate in football is just watching it only. Alright, not playing it, but watching it. But this is a game that whereby the people are able to, 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 to identify with it and to be really sucked into it, you know. And I tell you, it is, it is more, more emotional. It is more dramatic than your Korean uh, series, you know. Man, people weep, people cry, people shout, people dance, people hug one another, even among strangers. You know, there is something about football that creates this kind of a reaction and response. And this is one game or one sport that can really bring people from all over the world, all right, to just celebrate this game, to, to, to uh, 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 be happy when, uh, and be enthusiastic and uh, jubilant when their team wins and sad when their favorite team loses. Somebody said that life is like football. Now, it was Forrest Gump that says life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. But life, in, in, in a way, is like football. And the game of life is like football. You have to tackle your problems, block your fears, score your goal when you get the opportunity. 
But every team that goes inside there, inside the stadium, every player that plays there, what is their goal? Is, this, is it just to have a good time running around? You have 20 men running around with a ball, trying to put it into a goal that is guarded by another person on either side. What is the goal? I think it's very clear that every team that goes inside there, their goal is to lift up that trophy, to lay hands of that trophy and to be the winner of 2018 World Cup, the best in the world. Just to be able to touch that trophy and lift it up as a team, that is the ultimate of it all. And they are willing to go through arduous training, long sessions, Right, of disciplining the body, honing their skill, facing disappointments, everything they are willing to go through just for this ultimate goal of football or of the World Cup, to just hold that trophy. That's the goal. What about our life itself? We who, when, who are here and not even in Russia, we, many of us who are not football players, what is our ultimate goal in life? Have you ever considered what is the purpose of your being? Why do we exist? There is a simple basic question, but when asked of even the most intelligent people, Scientists, philosophers, many times it draws a blank. Most people do not even know what is their ultimate goal in life. They may be successful in the material sense, they have fame and wealth, but when asked the question, what is your ultimate goal in life, it draws a blank. Because we do not know, or many people do not know. Now, there are many, many answers, all right, all right? I know it's too small for you to read it. I just pick it up here and there. Some say that the ultimate goal in life is happiness. I want happiness. It is the goal of all other goals. Or they say it is winning the game. Or breaking records. Or becoming your best self. Be better today than yesterday. To be financially free. Some others say the ultimate goal should be just doing your best and enjoying it. The ultimate goal for some is physical health and mental serenity. Others say forget about the ultimate goal. Just live your life one day at a time, one step at a time. So what is the ultimate goal in life. What is the goal of your life? Why are you still alive today? There's only one answer. The ultimate goal of life. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I press on toward the goal, toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul has a goal in his life. And you can see it through the book of Philippians. Starting from the first chapter itself. He has a goal. He knows what he's fighting against and what he's fighting for. He knows what he's hated and where he's hated. And he's very focused. Very, very focused. Press on toward the goal. And what is Paul's goal? Now if you read chapter 1, it, it is very clear. Chapter 1 verse 20, he says, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. 
And in chapter 1, verse 27, he says that we may live a life that is worthy of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he says he press on towards that goal of living for Christ, yes. And a lot of other things that he said in the book of Philippians. And he says at the end of it, there is going to be a prize toward that prize which God has prepared for all of us who fulfill that ultimate goal that He has given to each and every one of us. And that prize is not just the World Cup trophy, which is fading and which passes us away. The World Cup is held every four years. The champion for the 2014 World Cup was Germany. Previous to that, was the World Cup champion was Spain in 2010. And you know the fate of these two teams and all other European teams that have won the World Cup, they never held it longer than four years. After that, even in the qualifying round itself, they were knocked out already. They couldn't even qualify for the quarter or even the semi-final. Just like what happened to Germany. Knocked out by Korea. Shocking. Shocking. All right? And it has never, this is the first time that they did not qualify in this manner since 1938. But it happened not only to Korea, but every World Cup champion holders, they have suffered this kind of a fate. They couldn't hold it for more than four years, and the next year they couldn't even qualify or, or go into the, into the uh, uh, round of 16 or uh, the quarterfinal. But Paul says what? Paul says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize the prize that God has for us, you are not going to lose it after four years. Hallelujah! It's for eternal. God has vouchsafed it for each and every one of us. The devil is not going to steal that prize away from you. It is sure. It is secure. But we must press on to win that prize. For which God has called me heavenward in in Christ Jesus. So what is that goal in life? Friends, to put it very simply, life's ultimate goal is to glorify God. Life's ultimate goal for every one of us is to glorify God. That's why God has created us. All creation exists to glorify God. Isaiah 43 verse 7, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I formed and made. God created us for His glory. Romans 11, 36, For of Him and through Him and to Him are all things to whom be glory forever. And of course, Revelation 4, 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and are were created. So, life's ultimate goal. We who have been created by God, the ultimate goal is simply to glorify God. As the Westminster Catechism says, to the question, what is the chief end of man? What is the ultimate goal of man? The chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor and say, my goal is to glorify God. Amen. That's why you are here. That's why the church is here. It is to glorify 
God and enjoy Him forever. My life is to glorify God. All of us must keep that in mind. Your life is to glorify God. But what does it mean to glorify God? We can say it nonchalantly, casually, glory to God. But man, I tell you, it's powerful. You see, our God is a God of glory. Our God is glorious. Amen? He's glorious. In fact, the word glory itself appears 257 times in the Bible. 50 times found in the book of Psalms itself. And when the glory of God is manifested, the response of the people are fear, awe, amazement. They were struck by the glory of God, whether it was at Mount Sinai with Moses, or whether it be manifested in the person of Jesus Christ, in whom dwell the glory of God. He was full of grace, full of the glory of God. He was the manifestation of the glory of God. So when we talk about the glory of God, it is powerful. But what does it mean when we say to glorify God? To glorify God is to acknowledge His greatness. To give Him honour, praising and worshipping Him because of who He is. He deserves to be praised, honoured and worshipped. To glorify God is to admire and exalt Him of His attributes, His characteristics, His holiness, His faithfulness, His mercy, His grace, His sovereignty. And there are so many things about His attributes. We honour, we recognise and we bow before Him. That's what it means to glorify God. And in our personal relationship with Him, to glorify God means to live with such a passionate devotion to the Holy One, His person, His purpose, His praise. And actually, God is glorified when we depend upon Him for everything in life. When Christ is the center of our life, that's when He is already glorified. God is glorified when we express it in every area of our lives. Home, church, workplace, businesses. Lord, I need you. Lord, I depend on you. If that is your attitude in life, you are already glorifying God in that kind of dependency. The chief end of man, the ultimate goal of man is to glorify God. I have a few examples of this year's football player and even the previous year. Radame Falco, the forward for Colombia, he said, I made the decision to follow Jesus Christ and to let Him guide my life, which is where things change. Because it wasn't about me and my desire anymore or what I wanted, but what God's plans and purposes were for me. In fact, there are many committed Christians in the, among the World Cup football players. And Falcao is one of them. And that's what it means to glorify God. You are identifying, you are surrendered, you are committed to God's plans for you. I think it was Max Lucado who wrote a book, It's Not About Me. So many times in football, so many times in the success of life, we think that it's about us. We are just like the ancient, uh, 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 not, not ancient, you know, just about maybe 500 years ago, when people think that everything, the sun revolves around the earth. We think that the earth is the center of the universe and everything revolves around the earth. 
until Copernicus came along in 1543 or something, you know, and says, no, the, it is the earth that revolves around the sun. Now, of course, that at that time was blasphemy. And it was Galileo that, that later says, hey, all the other planets revolve around the sun. The earth is not the center of the universe. You are not the center of the universe. I am not the center of the universe. Who is in the center of the universe? God is. And everything revolves around His plans, His purposes for each one of us. And when we recognize that, when we surrender ourselves to that, hey, God is glorified in our lives. Just by that recognition. So turn to your neighbor and say, make Christ the center of your life. Amen. But how do we glorify God? Although we know the term glorify God, how do we do it? There are many, there are, I tell you, I can, I can give you 20 ways to glorify God, all right? Uh, but I'll just list some of the, some of the ones that are reflected even in Philippians and a few other uh, uh, scriptures. How do you glorify God? You glorify God, of course, by praise and by worship. We glorify God when we praise Him. Psalms 50, 23, the one who offers thanksgiving as His sacrifice. What did God say? Glorifies me. You want to glorify God? Hey, just do what the Scripture says. Offer Him thanksgiving. Offer God praises. Come into the house of the Lord and worship Him. You are already glorifying Him. Do you know that? God is not asking us to do the impossible thing in order to glorify Him. No. Simple thing of just worship. In fact, worship is the very basic element, fundamental way of glorifying the Lord. So simple, any one of us can do it. So church, I urge you, take worship as, and praise and worship as a very powerful way of just glorifying God. And when your life glorifies the Lord, when what you are doing glorifies the Lord, I tell you, there's no blessings that He will withhold from you. Psalm 86 verse 12, I give thanks to you, O Lord my God. With my whole heart, I will glorify your name forever. That's why the word glory appears about 50 times in the book of Psalms itself. Mainly attributed to the Psalms written by David, a worshipper. So come early to the house of the Lord and just worship. Don't just be a spectator, you know, uh, uh, no, but, but, but be involved even in worship because God is glorified when you do that. We glorify God by becoming like Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 20 to 22, Paul says, whether he lives or dies, he says that Christ may be honored. Christ may be honored. Or Christ may be glorified. And likewise in other scriptures, 2 Corinthians 3.18, that we can be mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like Him and reflect His glory even more. That's why God wants to manifest His glory, not just to, sh not to show off His power, but really to reflect it in your life. We are reflectors, we are mirrors. We reflect the glory of Christ. There's a difference in a person who has Jesus Christ in their life, filled with the Holy Spirit. It may not be to the extent as the glory that was upon the face of Moses after he had met with the Lord in a mountain, and when he comes down, his face shone with the glory of God. But when you have the glory of God touching you, even your countenance will be changed. People know that there's something different about you. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Romans 8, 29, For whom He foreknew, He also predestined that we be conformed to the image of His Son. 
and you glorify God in your body. In your body. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether you eat or drink or whatever that you do, do it all for the glory of God. <clears throat> you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. You know that we can glorify God in our body. So therefore, take care of your body, okay? Especially we Asians, we like to eat. Oh, we dump everything into our body. The toxic, the non-toxic, the nutritious, the non-nutritious. It's just what, is, what we like, what, what feels good to our taste. But remember, your body is a temple of God. Do it all for the glory of God. Even in eating and drinking, hey, actually you can enjoy. The Bible does not prohibit you from eating and drinking. You know? But don't just eat and drink because of gluttony. But rather, you can even glorify God. And when people look at you, wow, you're so healthy, huh? What's the secret, huh? Ha, ah, that's an opportunity to share. But the body is not just for eating and drinking, but it is also the talents, the gifts that God has given you. And one man who have used his talents and body for the glory of God is none other than last night's favorite goal scorer, Cavani. The forward for Uruguay. He revealed that everything that he does, including football, is done in the name of God. He said, I am an I am an athlete for Christ. That's why I play for Him. To give Him glory. To thank Him for giving me the ability to play football. For giving me the divine gift that I'm trying to manage more and more. And we understand that because, I mean, as a football player at the World Cup level, they face a lot of pressure and temptation. He's trying to even manage it. And yes, last night, or was it this morning? This morning, all right, this morning, he did it so brilliantly. He scored two goals, right? He scored both goals. He scored two goals. <coughs> Uruguay against Portugal. And now because of him, bye-bye to Ronaldo already. Bye-bye <laughs> to Messi, bye-bye to Ronaldo. <laughs> but Cavani... He's totally committed to God. He says, I play football for the glory of God. For the glory of God. He recognized that. In fact, the Archbishop says, and he has been quoted as saying, God serves himself by having Cavani score goals. Hmm. That's how high a regard he has, even for, for this guy. Reminds me of Eric Liddell. The one in the famous chariots of God or chariots of fire. A runner in the Olympic. He has a sister by the name of Jenny. Jenny is very focused on being a missionary to China. But he says, yeah, I will, I will, I will be a missionary to China. But I also love to run. And he says, when I run, I feel the pleasure of God. When I run, I feel the pleasure of God. And if I were to forsake it, it is like throwing contempt on it all. And so he ran, he ran for the glory of God. Just like Cavani says, to give God the glory. Later on, as you know the story, Eric Lidl ended up as a missionary to China still. But as long as he was able to, uh, when he was able to, and with the opportunity, he ran for God. Glorify God by telling others about Him. 
2 Corinthians 4.15, as God's grace brings more and more people to Christ, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. Friends, when you share the gospel with somebody else, you are bringing glory to God. Do you know that? That's what the Bible says. There will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. So you want to glorify God? Share Jesus Christ. Testify of your faith. And this is a testimony of another great striker in South Korea. Not in this World Cup, but in the World Cup of 2014. But too young. But too young. He said, the first and main reason why I play football is to evangelize people. It would make me happy if just one person became interested in Christianity because of me. These are the players who know what is the ultimate goal that really matters in their life. It's not just winning that trophy, great as it is, but it is to glorify God. To glorify God. And do you know that God can also be glorified through our sufferings? It is not, not just the winners. It is so sad to see the losers walk away from the field dejected. But our God is not just a God for the winners. Our struggles can be used for God's glory as well. 1 Peter 4, 14 to 16. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory. Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. When you are persecuted, when people talk bad about you, the spirit of glory can rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. And here is a qualification here, <coughs> qualifier. <coughs> if you suffer as a thief, hey, there's no glory in it. If you suffer as a liar, there's no glory in it. So therefore, he says here, on the, let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. There's no glory in all of that. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. As a Christian, in your suffering, in the name of the Lord, for the sake of God, brothers and sisters, there's glory in it as well. Glorify God through your sufferings, through your struggles, whatever that may be. As what we have read, 1 Peter 4, 16, in another version, you know, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. And it's all over in the scripture. All right? When Christians go through suffering, that's, that is another way that God is glorified. Now, we don't pray for suffering, of course, but when we go through it, do you know that you can glorify God even through it? When you are defeated, even in your defeat, you can glorify God in your defeat. In life, not everybody will be victorious. Not everybody will be holding that World Cup, that trophy in life. 2 Corinthians 4.17, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, workers for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Weight of glory. And even in our death, in death, God can also be glorified. John 21, verse 19. Jesus, referring to Peter. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. Even death can glorify God. Do you know that? We are not to be afraid of death at all. Let our life, let our, even the, when we die, let it be unto the glory of God. It is because of his death that Christ was glorified. Death on the cross, that's why we are able to celebrate the Lord's Supper. It was his, by His death that the Father was glorified. 
He was obedient even until death. And even in our troubles, Psalms 50 verse 15, And call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. In your trouble, call unto the Lord. God says, I will deliver. And what will happen? You will glorify me in your trouble. When I deliver you. And even if God doesn't deliver us for whatever reason we have to go through it, hey, you can go through it victoriously, knowing that God can be glorified. Somebody say amen. That's what happened to the Panama players. You all remember that Panama, Panama, uh, Panama game? They played with, was it Argentina? Oh yeah, England, sorry. Okay, thank you, thank you. They played with England. I saw the game, but after half time, you know, I went to the mama shop for my, for my dinner. You know, and that was uh, quite late already. So when I went there, you know, there were a group of Malay guys there. So I just joined them and all that. So, so uh, say, you know, I saw the score there. Wow, 5 nil already. 5-0. Five 5-0. Zero. Five zero. England leading. You know, there's no way that Panama can win already. So the guy asked me, you know, who are you supporting? Uh, all in Malay, you know. Uh, sheepishly say, yeah, la. of course England, la, you know. <laughs> but in my heart, I say, I think I, I will support the underdog. And in my heart, I will support it. Come on, Panama, come on, Panama. And after that, when they scored that one goal, all right, the final game was 6 1, I think. When they scored that one goal, I saw the reaction. Man, you know, the stadium will burst alive and, be, and the Panama and, and, the, and, the, and the people from Panama, the supporters are cheering and wow, so happy and all that, as if they have scored the winning goal. They cannot win already. You know, there's no way that they can win. Since one, how to win? And then those Malay, young Malay boys say, Apa lah dia orang? Huh? Sorak macam menang dah. <laughs> But I saw the jubilation to Panama. It is history making. First time, first time in the World Cup. And the first goal. Wow, to them it means everything. It's not about winning anymore. But he is able to be there and to score that goal. To me, wow, that's the greatest victory. And you know the Panamian players, they always thank God for everything. Even... For their World Cup elimination, they bow down and thank God. And it is not just for the World Cup. It seems, you know, for after every practice, they will bow down and just pray a prayer of thanksgiving. In your trials and sufferings, in your defeat, it's not the end of everything. Let God be glorified. Amen? Let God be glorified. And you glorify God by bearing spiritual fruit. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Friends, let's be disciples of the Lord and bear fruit because that's the way that God is glorified too. Let's grow in the word of the Lord. We have many opportunities, discipleship classes coming up, equip classes coming up, seeding classes coming up. We have excellent teachers and facilitators, you know, teaching the word of the Lord in order for you to grow and bear fruit in the Lord, to be like Jesus Christ. All right, all these are not just having, uh, 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 adding more things to your already busy schedule, but so that we can grow even as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we grow in all these ways. And talking about the testimony of Park Yun Yang, uh, Park Chun, Chun Yang, the, 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 the striker just now, you know. He says, you know, he plays, he, 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 he plays football in order to evangelize. Let's continue to evangelize as well. Those of us who have been using the uh, one-minute witness tool, use it, constantly use it, all right? You may, you may falter here and there, but don't give up, all right? Let's let that be um, our means to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, I have just 
plug or I've just mentioned a few things, a few key areas that we can glorify God. But at the end of the day, we are to glorify God in what? In all things. We are to glorify God in all things, everything, everywhere that you go, whether it be in your house, in your home, in your business, everywhere, right? in your career, you know, in the church, everywhere. Let God be glorified. As Jesus says, Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Friends, that is our goal in life. Wherever we are, we have to ask the question, D-I-G-G. D-I-G-G. Does it glorify God? Does it glorify God? If it does glorify God, do it. Pursue it. If it doesn't glorify God, forsake it. Forget it. It's just like in those early days where they have the WWJD. What would Jesus do? Now it's D-I-G-G. Does it glorify God? Whether you're alone, whether you're talented or not talented, rich or poor, every one of us can glorify God. That is our ultimate goal. Whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. To God, be the glory. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Shall we stand together? Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah.